Hi everyone, uh, my name is Mark. I am a community mental health support worker here at Sarah Riel. Um, today I just wanted to talk about the topic of anxiety and kind of stress and how they're similar and how they're different. Um, this is an area that I know personally very well, so uh, let's get right into this. First, I want to kind of talk about a couple of definitions. So anxiety is a negative mood state characterized by physical tension and apprehension about the future. Fear, on the other hand, is an immediate alarm reaction to danger. And then there's panic attacks. Um, panic is an abrupt experience of intense fear or acute discomfort accompanied by physical symptoms that usually include heart palpitations, chest pain, shortness of breath, and dizziness. Sometimes people feel that this is kind of like a heart attack, which just increases their anxiety even more. Anxiety and anxiousness uh, is something that is actually quite normal for us. Um, it's been a part of us from an evolutionary standpoint, and the anxiousness uh, helps us to actually perform better. You've probably experienced this before a big job interview or before a test, uh, stuff like that, or your first date. Often pe people experience this as like butterflies in their stomach um, and they feel kind of a little sweaty a little bit, but that is, that is normal. Where it becomes a problem is when this system of uh, anxiousness it gets out of control. And that's when it turns into an anxiety disorder. So how does anxiety present itself? Um, anxiety often is experienced in uh, physiological symptoms as well as psychological symptoms. So some of the things that you might feel in your body will be like increased heart rate, increased perspiration, your mouth gets really dry, you feel numbing and tingling in your hands and your feet. Uh, one very distinct uh, symptom that people who have anxiety feel is muscle tension. Often people with anxiety will have more headaches due to the tenseness. Um, and another one would be fatigue. Um, some of the psychological symptoms that people experience during anxiety is uh, difficulty concentrating, worry and apprehension about future events. Um, for those with um, social anxiety, they might worry about uh, the dynamics of a social relationship or how to engage in a conversation, or they just don't like crowds, period. Um, other forms of psychological anxiety is just worrying about their health. Uh, for me personally, one thing that kind of uh, is difficult with anxiety is um, physiological cues. So if something seems a little off in my stomach, um, that kind of cues my anxiety. And later on, we'll talk about ways that we can kind of cope with that. On the other hand, stress, stress often uh, presents itself in a similar way to anxiety. But the difference is, is that once the stressor is gone, usually the stress stops. But with anxiety, this kind of stress continues on even after the stressor uh, is removed from your experience. Uh, now to coping strategies. Um, there's a, a bunch of different ways that we can work. And what I mentioned here is not an exhaustive list. Um, what I'll do is in the link below uh, or in the description below, you'll see uh, a couple of resources that are very handy. You can just print them out and use these uh, to work through some of your anxious thoughts. So the first one is thought journaling. Here you would write down the event that's kind of giving you anxiety and write down your anxious thoughts. What then you would want to write down the consequences of this thought. So such as uh, if I go to the store and I'm short five cents, uh, will the cashier get really mad at me? And what would be the consequences of that? Oh, I might feel embarrassed to in front of the uh, cashier, or I might uh, feel embarrassed in front of other patrons at the store. Then what you should do is write down a rational counter statement. So something could be like, oh, well, everyone forgets uh, 
how much money or how much change they have in their pocket from time to time, or usually five cents isn't that big of a deal, or if so what, you can always go back and uh, give five cents and come back later. It's important that when you're experiencing anxiety or panic to reflect on other times that you felt this way. For me personally, when I get those cues from my body, such as if my heart's kind of racing for no reason, um, I think about every other time or as many times where I felt this exact same feeling and I reflect on what the outcome was. The majority of the time, nothing bad happened. So I just have to tell myself that this will just pass, I'll be okay, and it'll most likely turn out like every other time. Next, I would like to talk about what could versus what will happen. First, you can write down your worry. So we'll use a coin example again. We're short, we're short change at, the, at no frills, let's say. Um, next, you would write down some clues that your worry will not happen. One could be, well, I know Lucy, she's a cashier there. She's really, really nice. Another one could be that, oh, I know that I'm, I'm a good budgeter and I always make sure I have enough change. Then you should write down what will probably happen instead if your worry does not come true. Here could be like, Lucy is really nice and she won't, she won't mind if I'm short five cents. Then you should write down if your worry does come true, how will you handle it? Would eventually be okay. Here, you could think about how, oh, well, maybe I'll just ask uh, to, put, to put my groceries aside and I'll just quickly run home to, or run to my car to grab that extra five cents. After answering these questions, it's important to kind of rate your anxiety to see if your anxiety has decreased as you kind of thought through the process and the different ways that this might pan out. It's also important uh, as another coping strategy for anxiety to redirect that anxious tension into something more physical, like exercising or just getting up, going for a walk. Sometimes for me, I just feel very tense and I have to move and I'll just like get up and do like 10 jumping jacks just to kind of burn that excess energy because I find if we kind of sit in that energy, our anxiety levels just increase. And most importantly, make sure that you have time in your day that you purposely make to just enjoy the things that you like at home. This could be a hobby, this could be journaling, painting, listening to music, reading a book, anything that brings you happiness, devote time throughout your day, even if it's just five minutes.